We are going to look at some applications that relate to revenue, cost, and profit functions for a business. So in this first example, we have a cake maker who has determined that the cost per, for producing wedding cakes is $55.50 per wedding cake plus $31,560 per month in fixed cost. So those fixed costs are gonna be things like rent or insurance. In other words, things that are not going to change each month no matter how many cakes she produces. All right, then they tell us that the cake maker sells each cake for $450 each. So in our step one, they're asking me to find the revenue function. Revenue function refers to how much money your business is going to bring in. So if this person is selling each cake for $450, if they only made one wedding cake in a month, we would multiply 450 times one. If they sold two in a month, we'd multiply 450 times two. If they sold three in a month, we'd multiply 450 times three. So now you see the pattern. In other words, however many wedding cakes they sell, we're gonna multiply by 450. So we're gonna let X represent the number of wedding cakes. So in this case, you don't have to show the parentheses necessarily. We would say our revenue function is 450 times X. Now, as we look at our cost function, we have to consider the two types of costs. So the first thing they told us is that it's going to cost $55.50 per wedding cake. So if this particular person only made one wedding cake in a month, we'd multiply it by one. But then it also said plus they had $31,600 or $560 in fixed costs. So those are those things that no matter how many wedding cakes they make, they're gonna still have those costs. So if this particular person sold two wedding cakes in a month, we'd multiply the 5550 times two and then add our fixed cost. If they sold three wedding cakes in a month, we'd multiply 55.50 times three and then add our fixed cost. So in other words, we're going to let X represent the number of wedding cakes that gets multiplied by the variable cost of $55.50, and then we add our fixed cost of 31,560. So this would represent your cost function. And again, they're not gonna show the parentheses in the actual function. I was just showing you um, how to substitute number of wedding cakes. Okay, so when we get to the profit function, you calculate a profit function by taking your revenue, money that you bring into a business, and you subtract your cost, and you hope that that's going to be positive so that you are actually making money in your business. So in this case, my revenue function was the $450 per wedding cake times X number of wedding cakes, and then we are subtracting our cost of $55.50 per wedding cake, which is X, plus the fixed cost of 31,560. Now, you'll notice I put that in parentheses. The reason I did that is because you have to subtract both types of cost. And if you don't put the parentheses, you might forget to distribute that minus sign to both terms. So when I go to simplify this, I've got a 450x, that becomes minus 55.50 times x, and then also minus the 31,560. So when I combine these like terms, that is going to leave me with $394.50 per wedding cake. So that's the profit they're making per wedding cake. But then you still have to subtract off those fixed cost of 31,560. So this would be our, what we consider our profit equation in that case. Okay, so the last step here is asking us to find the break-even point. So let me move things up just a tad. Okay, and so with our break-even point, 
we want to know um, when the profit is exactly zero. So we're going to take this profit equation and we're going to set it equal to zero and we solve it. So break even point is when is your profit equal to zero. So if we take our 394.50 times X and we subtract the 31,560, then we'll solve that equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the 31,560 to both sides. And we'll come over here. So that leaves me with 31,560 is equal to our 394.50 times X. And then to get X by itself, we're gonna divide both sides by the 394.50. And you can punch that out on a calculator. And so in this case, when I punch it out, um, I get a nice even, and it won't always be even in the real world, um, but in this case, we got a nice even 80. So we would know as a business owner that we have to sell at least 80 wedding cakes in a month in order to break even. Okay, on the next uh, problem we've got, it's been determined that the cost of producing X units of a certain item is 10X plus 12 times 80 and they give us a demand function this time, and that demand function in terms of P is equal to, and they're using D of X to say demand, and that is 49 minus 0.25 times X. Now, when you're asked to find a revenue function, the way you find a revenue function is you multiply the demand, what we're gonna call, or uh, what they're calling P in this case, times the quantity. So if we come in here and we take what they gave us for the P, 49 minus the 0.25X, and we multiply times X, which is the number of units, this is going to distribute. And so we're gonna end up with a 49 times X, and then we have minus a 0.25 times X squared. Now the order of the terms doesn't really matter, but normally what you're going to see them do is you're gonna see them put them in order from highest power to lowest. And so in this case, if I did, I would write it just like that. So that is my revenue function in this particular case. So again, profit is calculated by taking your revenue minus your cost. And so in this case, if I take the revenue function that I found in the first part, let me come down here where I've got more room. So my revenue function from the first part was negative 0.25x squared plus 49x. And then I subtract my cost, which they gave me right up here. That's the cost of producing x units. Um, now keep in mind that is so 10X plus 1280, okay, so that is the cost for um, X units of a certain item, so 10X plus 1280. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and distribute the minus. So for my profit, we've got negative 0.25X squared. We have our 49X. We're gonna say minus 10X and then minus 1280. And then we will combine like terms. So the uh, X squared term is by itself. So it's still negative 0.25X squared. When I combine a positive 49X minus a 10X, that's gonna leave me with positive 39X. And then I still have minus the 1280. So that would be my profit equation in that case. Okay, so then finally, we're going to look at um, what is called a piecewise function where we've got two pieces. This is an international phone call, and we see that the phone company charges $6.10 for calls up to eight minutes. So let's start with that. So my cost will be a flat $6.10 if my call is under eight minutes. 
or up to eight minutes would include it. So we'll say less than or equal to eight minutes. And of course, it is greater than zero because once you place that call, you're actually on the phone. All right, but then what happens if you go over eight minutes? So now we're gonna look at what happens when your X is greater than eight. And it says they charge 98 cents for each additional minute over eight. So you still pay the $6.10 for that first eight minutes, but then it says you're gonna pay a variable charge of 98 cents per minute over eight. So if X is my total number of minutes, I have to subtract eight from that because those eight minutes are being charged the $6.10. So the X minus eight would tell me how many minutes over so that I know which ones are charged the 98 cents. So that is how you would write that piecewise function.